Did you know that the average human heart beats over a hundred thousand times per day and circulates 2,000 gallons of blood? Now imagine if this vital engine were under threat from pericarditis, myocarditis, or endocarditis and couldn't pump effectively. Stay tuned as we will look at the importance of understanding carditis. I'll share an easy way that I used in nursing school to remember the area affected by each type, and we'll run through a quick scenario at the end to test what you have learned for a chance to win a nursing.com book bundle. Everywhere you look today, you hear about inflammation and its potential to negatively affect the body. While it begins as a tool for the body to protect itself from harm, such as infection, injury, and from toxins, as well as making repairs to cells and tissues, inflammation can ultimately become chronic. Chronic inflammation can lead to damage all throughout the body and lead to serious chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer, even autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis and lupus, and even life-threatening events like strokes and heart attacks. So let's talk about inflammation that occurs particularly in the heart. This type of inflammation is called carditis and is often caused by infection from viral, bacterial, fungal, and even parasitic sources or autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus and even medications and recreational IV drug use and complications from surgery. Imagine your heart as a diligent librarian working in a bustling library, tirelessly organizing and distributing books or blood to eager students, body cells, in every corner of the library, your body. Suddenly, the librarian suffers a severe allergic reaction, creating a bunch of inflammation. This causes their movements to become sluggish and their efficiency to plummet. Because the librarian is bogged down with inflammation, books or blood start to pile up, leaving readers, the body cells, to wait impatiently and get angry as they don't have their books. This mirrors how an inflamed heart struggles to pump blood leading to a backlog of nutrients and oxygen that can't reach essential organs or tissues. This inflammation can manifest in three different areas of the heart. The outer layer, or pericardial sac around the heart, the middle layer, which is the heart muscle itself, and the innermost layer, the endocardium. Pericarditis is inflammation of the outermost layer of the heart, or pericardium, which is a double-layered sac that contains a specific amount of fluid and protects the heart from impact and invading pathogens. Inflammation can cause fluid to build up, which will make the sac squeeze the heart like an anaconda and affect pumping. This condition can be very painful and presents similarly to anginal chest pain, making diagnosis based on that symptom alone, very tricky. Severe cases may require pericardiocentesis to manually drain fluid buildup. Antibiotics will treat if it's infectious and rarely surgery is needed. Myocarditis is inflammation of the myocardium, the middle layer of the heart wall, the muscle layer. This affects pumping, which weakens the heart and prevents proper perfusion. Myocarditis is often misdiagnosed by physicians oh, due to the absence the? of direct symptoms. And it's the third leading cause of sudden death in adolescents and young adults between the ages of 13 and 40. Endocarditis is inflammation of the endocardium or the innermost layer of the heart. It lines the heart's chambers and valves. This condition requires quick treatment with medication or surgery to avoid destroying the heart's valves. When the valves have vegetation, it makes the heart work harder and can eventually lead to heart failure. Further complication of stroke can ensue if infectious emboli break from the valvular vegetation and travel to the brain. 
A simple way that worked for me in nursing school to remember the areas affected by each form of carditis was to use this simple mnemonic. People on motorcycles must eat insects. P for pericarditis, the outer layer is affected. M, the middle layer for myocarditis. And E for endocarditis, which affects the inner layer and the heart valves. Working as a nurse, I have seen these three conditions often get misdiagnosed. Infectious and inflammatory diseases of the heart have multiple etiologies, making diagnosis and treatment a clinical challenge. Patients may present with acute pain, mimicking myocardial infarction, or may seek medical attention because of fatigue and low-grade flu-like symptoms that fail to resolve over a period of weeks. As a future nurse, understanding these conditions will enable you to provide better care for patients suffering from heart inflammation, recognize symptoms early, and contribute to more effective treatment planning. We invite you to test what you have learned by answering a question on the following scenario in the comments below. Also, feel free to tell us what you thought of this video. Here's the scenario. A 72-year-old male from the houseless community arrives at the emergency department complaining of symptoms like general malaise, fatigue, and weight loss. He seems a little confused and upon physical assessment shows an elevated temperature, left-sided weakness and facial drooping, and a heart murmur. He's what the nurses call a frequent flyer and has been treated on previous visits for withdrawal symptoms and infections related to recreational IV drug use. Now this probably doesn't sound like anything cardiac related at first glance, but can you tell which form of carditis this patient is suffering from? Help us get to the bottom of it by commenting your best guess below. We will select a winner from the list of the first 10 commenters to receive a free nursing.com book bundle. For more on pericarditis, myocarditis, and endocarditis, the carditises, be sure to visit nursing.com slash heart. We love you guys. Now go out and be your best selves today, and as always, happy nursing.